Well, you picked it up at a garage sale, or maybe it was passed down to you by a relative. Is it trash, though, or is it a treasure? Antiques expert Paul Brown is here with us now. It's so good to have you with us. Well, thank you very much for thank having you. me. I appreciate yeah, it. A lot of people excited about this. Let's start first, though, by talking about your son. My son, third generation. He's now taken off on his own. He started his own auction gallery. He's got a big sale coming up this Saturday at 1030. Um, he's got stuff from Prince Faisal's mansion, which was a famous house in, in Buckhead when the mm -hmm. prince lived here or had a house here in Atlanta. And he's got a big sale, and you know, fingers crossed. I'm like yeah. the proud papa, yeah. you know. I'm trying. <laughs> he learned from the best. Huh? Yes, and that, yes, yeah, so that, that's that's where it is. It's 2080 fought in a row. Well, thank you for putting that up there. It's Twine Services. You can go on that website, and it'll lead you to all the stuff he's selling. Okay, what's his name? His name is Elijah. Elijah. Yeah. Okay, wishing him the very best. Yeah, good luck, Elijah. Now let's get to these items. Yes. We're going to start first with the Budweiser picture, I think. Yeah, the Budweiser picture. Well, the thing about Budweiser, in 1859, a guy named Eberhard Anheuser bought a failing brewery out of bankruptcy. He was a soap manufacturer. He knew nothing about brewing beer. And for about two years, it floundered along. They had just two employees until his daughter married a guy named Adolphus Bush. Now, Adolphus Bush was a very sort of ambitious, smart young man, and he jumped right into the family business, of which, again, there were about three employees, started selling Beer and he made enough money to buy half the company from wow. his father in law. So then he realized he didn't have much of a product. So he took off to Germany, his ancestral homeland, to study the great brew houses over in Germany. And he came, became enamored with this little village called Budweiss. And he came, he loved, had loved their beer, loved how they did things. He came back to America with a brand new plan and essentially invented Budweiser. Mm -hmm. And um, the rest became, is history. Rest is history. But he, <laughs> along the way, he came up with a few great things. He, he was the first to pasteurize beer. So he made the product better and he made some innovations in the bottom bottling business, the bottling area of, of, of the business. And so now he had the better product and the ability to ship it all over. So that was the first part of his genius. The second part was the marketing. He virtually invented branding. And now remember, he did this 25 years before Coca-Cola did it. He put Budweiser on everything, mm -hmm. keychains, bottle openers, calendars, belt buckles, and prints like this one on the screen. Oh, look, we're showing Budweiser. Like, nobody knows what that looks like. <laughs> um, so yeah, he came with these prints. He commissioned a St. Louis artist to paint the famous, now well, he invented this story too, the famous Budweiser Clydesdale that were ready to bring you fresh beer at a moment's notice. And he would give these away to tavern owners, again, inventing sort of per point of purchase mm -hmm. advertising. So they're hanging Clever. in the bar, you're sitting in the bar, you're like, I think I'd like a beer. Oh, I think I'll have Budweiser. Mm -hmm. And and then, of course, Budweiser became the largest selling beer in the world, and they still are very famous for their advertisements. Um, this falls into what I call sort of like the sin category. So things that have to do with drinking or smoking or gambling or sex always bring a, a sort of premium. And so this is essentially just a framed poster. It's worth three to four hundred dollars. Pretty cool, huh? Three to four hundred. Yeah, oh yeah. And as long as there are beer drinkers on this planet, that picture will be worth that. Hey, that's or, or not more. too bad. I know, okay. kind of cool, right? Yeah, I bet the owner's happy about that. Next, yes. a basket. Ah, the basket. It's really nice, and it? it's it's a, it's actually tiny. There's another picture with it with a. Um, with a ruler in there. That is a Hopi basket, and the Hopi were a Native American culture that lived primarily southern uh, or no northern New Mexico, northern Arizona, and southern Colorado today. And they were a peaceful tribe. They were misnamed the Pueblo Indians by the Spanish who came up from Mexico. Uh, Pueblo means little village. And they were among the only Native American tribes to be, have permanent settlements. They mm -hmm. lived in little villages, in Pueblos. And they worshiped these spirit entities called Kachinas. They're little, little, basically little girls, little figures. And they, they used them to, as primitive cultures do to sort of explain things they couldn't explain, like the weather or good fortune or, you know, the planting of the corn, which they did. And these were made out of, out of yucca fibers. So if you know the yucca tree, it's like, like spiky, pointy things. And you could peel it off to make these, get these fibrous strands, then weave them weave into these together. coils and then just coil it up. And they, make, they, they made baskets this big for like corn and, and laundry and all sorts of things. This is a small piece. It's about three inches, uh, three inches in diameter. Um, Three inches? Yeah, that's wow. it. You'll see right there. Okay, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's it's, the it's, really it is. It's very small. Probably made as a tourist piece. It's hard to say. It does have some age because it begins to turn that brown color. Probably from the first part of the 20th century. Most likely a tourist piece. Probably not much utilitarian uh, history with it. But that being said, it does have some age on it. It is, in my opinion, an authentic Hopi basket. And that little teeny tiny basket's worth $150. $100 to $150. Whoa. Isn't that cool? Yeah. yeah. And they'll last forever. They've got Hopi baskets that are 500 years old. Okay, so if you had a bigger one, you'd really. Well, you get bigger, throw your shoes in it or your laundry. Well, yeah. I don't know if it's cash if in. You wanted, if you want to cash if in, you, you could. To do or that. you could just keep it. So know. worth a little bit. Yes. Okay. And here's the third piece. This is from an employee here at Good Day Atlanta. Who? See that? It, what can I say? I'm curious. Okay, we we'll can talk say about later. It. Anyway. <laughs>
<laughs> anyway, so this is the piece, and here's the, I don't have to hold it. It's a, a painting by Louis Aston Knight. It's actually a print by Louis Aston Knight. Mm -hmm. Louis Aston Knight was born in Paris to a famous artist named Daniel Ridgway Knight, and his dad um, was a very famous artist, exhibited widely across the continent in museums and galleries and salons and all sorts of things. And he raised his son, you know. Oh, I'm holding it back up. I'm sorry. This is live TV. So I'm holding it as I'm talking? Yeah, so, okay. just hold it on. I'm up. holding it as I'm talking. It's like I'm selling it, guys. This is the <laughs> Louis Aston Knight picture. It, anyway, anyway, Louis uh, trained with his dad, and he was on his way. By the time he was 21, he exhibited at the Paris Salon. Now, Paris, of course, was and is the capital of the Western art world. The Paris Salon was sort of the most fancy, she-she artist society. So if, you're, if you were exhibiting there, you were somebody. Mm -hmm. He was well on his way to being somebody until he met an American girl, and he moved to New Jersey. And oh. He's now known as an American painter. Even though he was born in France. He did most of his painting here in America. And he had to kind of start over because he wasn't as well known yeah, over here. here. And, but he did start over and he did well. He exhibited in New York and Philadelphia and Boston. And in 1922, it really took off. President Warren Harding fell in love with one of his pictures and bought it and hung it in the White House. And it hung in the White House until the 1960s when Jackie Kennedy redid the whole White House. Okay. And it's still in their collection. They just don't exhibit it anymore. And so Louis Aston Knight, virtually overnight, became uh, well, the version of a, of a, of a um, you know, like a celebrity. Yeah, he was a celebrity it. painter. Mm -hmm. And so they reproduced his work widely, not in an effort to deceive, but in an effort to sell these to a wider market. You mm -hmm. could buy it for a few dollars as opposed to, you know, a few hundred dollars at the time. Now, if this were original, if this were an actual Louis Aston Knight painting, it would be worth somewhere around twelve fifteen thousand dollars, um, and they're going up uh, like a skyrocket. In fact, he just set the record a couple years ago for a hundred thousand dollars for one of his wow. pieces. Yeah, so they're going up. This, however, is a print, and you can—it's pretty evident. You can look at it; it's yeah. relatively easy to see that that's what it is. Um, probably made right after the uh, White House purchase, maybe maybe the thirties or so, something to that effect, based on the style of the frame, as is the original frame. Again, not meant to deceive. It's just a print. It's probably worth one hundred fifty, two hundred dollars. You know, that's I mean, more than what yeah, I thought you were going to say. Still, though. You know, because it is, it does have some age on it. Gosh, we're getting up to 75, 80 years old now. Yeah. A little more than that. So, you know, it's kind of cool. But yeah. great American artist. There you go. Pretty. Yeah. I'm loving right. the history behind all this. Yes. Very, very cool. If you think that it's you, everywhere. It is. If you think you have a hidden treasure, then email pictures in a description to Good Day at Fox5Atlanta.com. You can follow Paul Brown on Twitter at Auction King ATL to keep up with him. Paul, it's good to meet you. Pleasure was mine. Thank Thanks you for so having much me. Thanks for coming in today. Love it. Loving this. The time right now is 926. Come